Uh, I am Gustavo Padova, and I'm here today to talk about the unification of the kernel graphics stacks between Android and the mainline Linux kernel. Uh, it's a work we've been doing the last past few years, uh, and we finally managed, managed to get like the first uh, bit, bits together. Uh, I work for Collabora. Collabora is an open source software consulting company that's highly focused on graphics, kernel work, multimedia. Uh, we do some web browsers as well, LibreOffice, uh, build integration. We basically help our clients to, 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 get, to be more, more close to the upstream community and deliver better products using open source. Uh, as for myself, I've been involved in the Linux kernel for about eight years now. In the past, uh, I used to do a lot of Bluetooth work on the Bluetooth service system, uh, and, and then I shifted my focus to, to graphics uh, in the past few years. And one of the, my main works have been on the explicit synchronization framework for, for the mainline kernel, which one, one of the pieces uh, that I'm going to, to be talking today. Uh, I'm also one of the committers one on the, the, the experimental GRM MISC3 in the kernel. Uh, we've been trying to play uh, with a different model uh, when pushing pets mainline. So we, we don't have only the maintainers there. We have a lot of people with com commit access. Uh, I'm one of, one of those persons. We have like 10 or 10, 12 people there these days. Um, so here's what I'm planning to talk today. So my idea is for you to walk away with this talk with two main, main things. Uh, I want to I wanna talk a little bit um, about the reasons that Android decided to create their own graphics stack in the first place. Uh, and then we are going to move to talk about what happened uh, in, on the mainline side that, that made it possible to, to have Android working with it, having a graphics stack that, that would be able to, 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 to run on, on top of the mainline Linux kernel. So let's start talking about the Android, the Android side first. Uh, here's a very minimal uh, scheme on how, how the Android stack works. Uh, I didn't, I didn't add, I didn't left to all, all the components. I removed some of them to make it more simple uh, and more focused for, for this talk. So on the, on the top we have, the, on, the, on the top we have the Android apps, they would, uh, provide the buffers uh, with the content that they want to put on the screen uh, and hand those buffers to, to the Surface Flinger with the Android Compositor. The Compositor would get that buffer uh, and, and uh, along with the buffers for maybe, maybe your navigation bar and your status and active bar, uh, we'll get those buffers together uh, and send a request uh, to, to the lower layers to get, the, to get those, those buffers on the screen. That request would go to the hardware composer layer, which is part of the hardware abstraction layer on Android. Uh, and in that layer, you can do a lot of vendor-specific configurations uh, on the request. And that request would, would later go to, to the kernel to, to be displayed on, on your screen. Uh, and in the kernel, there is a component that's the atomic uh, display framework was a, a, that is a display framework that Android built from, from scratch. Um, after analyzing what, what was the available options uh, on upstream, on KMS and FBDev, they decided to go and write their own uh, display framework. And the display framework, after doing a lot of core handling, it handles the request to the driver, into the vendor driver in the kernel that can uh, actually put that on the screen for you. So let's talk a bit more about AGF. Um, so after analyzing what was happening in the mainline kernel, I think that was like five years ago, uh, Google realized that KMS wasn't uh, a good fit for, for their needs. And they decided to go uh, with a new implementation from scratch, so they, they created uh, ADF. And one of the main features of the atomic display framework is, of course, uh, the atomic update of, update of planes. Uh, so in graphics, we have this concept of planes. Uh, it's basically, you have your, your screen, and you can divide it in, in different reg regions, and those regions, we, we, we call them planes. And those planes, uh, you, can, you can have like different buffers associated to it. And usually, 
when you want to update your screen, you want to make sure you're updating all the planes at the same time. Uh, and that was something that KMS could guarantee uh, back then. And <clears throat> AGF brought this feature of the atomic updates uh, of planes. Uh, because if you don't have this kind of atomic update, like, like in KMS before, the user could start, start seeing a lot of tearing on the screen and the, the user experience would be, would be like really, really bad. Uh, also, uh, Android needs some custom pixel formats because some hardware uh, start appearing that, that required like custom pixels formats to communicate uh, data between hardware blocks inside the hardware and KMS couldn't support that uh, at the time. So when they designed ADF, they added support for, for those custom pixels formats. And in, term of, in terms of implementation, uh, AGF was designed with the idea of a driver-specific blob that you could pass around. Uh, so because they had uh, the hardware composer layer, which, which is vendor-specific, it's part of the, the, the abstract, abstraction, abstraction light layer, uh, you could have this, this type of driver-specific blob because you would, you would build your request on the user space on the hardware composer layer, uh, hand that to ADF, and ADF would, would hand the blob uh, to, your, to your driver for a scan out on the screen. Uh, that made uh, ADF, that, that, that made ADF being built as a, a monolithic mid layer, so most of the logic uh, in that framework was part of the big mid layer, uh, and then drivers and vendors would use uh, the driver specific blobs to, to any extra and specific configuration. And one, one other feature uh, is the explicit synchronization um, of, of explicit synchronization of buffer sharing. So when we talk about explicit synchronization, uh, we are talking about sharing, uh, synchronizing the buffer sharing between two drivers through user space. Uh, the opposite of that would be implicit synchronization. That was the what was, was existed before. Uh, there was no implementation either on Android or mainline for explicit synchronization. Uh, and Android started to have uh, a lot of problems with implicit synchronization because basically every single vendor would start implementing their own way to synchronize the buffers they would be sharing between the, between the hardware blocks uh, inside, the, inside the vendor driver. And a lot of, a lot of bugs would pop up. Uh, and things start like getting really, really, really bad. Uh, moreover, there could be situations where uh, your whole desk desktop would freeze because you didn't know what was happening inside the kernel because you only had like this implicit type of synchronization that doesn't provide uh, any type of information for user space. So they decide to, as they were rewriting the whole display framework, they decide to add support for, for explicit synchronization on it. And for that, uh, they create, they create something that's called uh, the sync framework. Um, and here, here is an example on how this, this framework would work, how it would, would do uh, explicit synchronization. So first, uh, let's suppose you are going to, to send something for rendering on, on your GPU, and you send that call uh, to your GPU. Your GPU will then schedule your, your request and send, a f and send back to your space a fence. Uh, user space could then get that fence uh, and pass on it to, to, to the other side, to AGF, uh, to, the display, to the display driver side. Uh, and that fence would be attached to the atomic commit uh, that we would use the same buffer that is still being handled by, by your GPU. Um, and AGF would do the same thing. We would schedule your request and then give, give you a fence back that, that you go to your space uh, and that fence can then later be sent to, to, to the handler, to, to the GPU again in another handler job that uses the same buffer. So you, you, you create this kind of uh, consumer producer uh, queue with each side waiting for, for the other side fences to, to signal. So when the fences signal, you, you are allowed to, to use the buffer. So if, if you have like a, a, a fence from, from the GPU side, and you are, you are waiting for, for that fence to signal before putting, putting your, your, your buffer on the screen, uh, the AGF will just sit there and wait uh, for, for the fence to signal before going ahead with any, any scan out. So 
So as I said, Google creates the, the Sync framework uh, to help uh, AGF with the, the work of getting uh, explicit synchronization on Android. Uh, and the Sync framework was, was basically um, a way to pass uh, the fences between user space and, and the kernel and to use file descriptors for that. So we, we would create like files and and associate file descriptors to that and send to user space. And user space, who, uh, one, one nice thing of, of, of having file descriptors for it is that you can then pass between your user space process and Android does, does that a lot. So it was, it was, was really good. Um, there is three main objects in there, the sync timeline, the sync point, and the sync fence. And the sync timeline is basically the counter that's going to guarantee the ordering be between the fence that we are creating in a specific driver context. So every screen on our system could have uh, a specific timeline associated to that, or every GPU, GPU ring would have its own, uh, its own counter. And then your, your fences that actually are named sync points on Android, those, those sync points would re represent values on that timeline, uh, and they can and they can basically has three, have have three different uh, states. So you create sync point uh, on a given timeline, and that sync point is associated to a job. It's not as like like a buffer; it's to a job. Uh, and when it creates, of course, on the active state, when the job is finished, your GPU finished like handling that buffer, or you had something on on, on the display side that was going to the screen, uh, once that job is finished, either a scan out or handling job, it goes to the sign state, and if something goes wrong, we have the error state of, as well. Uh, the final object there is the sync fence, which is basically a file where we wrap all, all the sync points that, that, that we need to, to wait on. Uh, it also has this, the same kind of, kind of signaling, uh, and it's basically used for, for passing the fence around, so we create the file, uh, we associate some file descriptor to it, and, and hand that user space. So that's, and in terms, okay. And one nice thing of sync fences is that we can, we can merge them together, so if for some reason you, you will need to wait for operations on the same buffers, that, that will happen like on different places on your system, uh, and you have like timelines on those two different places in your system, you can, you can merge them together uh, to make your life easier to, to wait for the job to be finished. So in this case, we're merging two sync points from two different uh, sync timelines on, on, the same, on the same sync fence. That's quite useful for a, a, a number of user cases. And in terms of the APIs, was it is like really simple. You can like in your space, there is some way to wait. Uh, I will control to wait on on that on the sync point to to signal. You could uh, you could use like pull or select as well on the file descriptor. Um, you could merge, as I said, or and there is a third I will control to to get some information from from the sync fence and the sync front, the sync points inside that fence. So that was uh, what I want to talk about, uh, how AGF was created and how, how it was designed. Um, now I want to move on to, to talk about what we did on the mainline side in order to get Android to run uh, on top of the, the, the mainline KMS um, infrastructure and interfaces. And the first thing that we need to talk about is why AGF wasn't um, added to mainline, why it was rejected. So while AGF solved many of the problems that Android had back then, uh, it, it wasn't like that, it wasn't suitable for mainline for a couple of reasons, uh, and I'll, I'll try to list some of them here. The first one is that AGF had a single update queue, and for, for, me, for Android, that was, that was okay, because they had only one screen in the system. Uh, 
so we have, if you have only on screen, a single update, you, update queue is fine. But when you can, when you come like to Linux desktop, where you, ha, you can have like three or two, many, many screens in your system, uh, if you have a single update queue uh, and you have like screens with different frame rates, uh, things start like going a little, a little, a little bad, because you could, you, 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 you would start like either dropping frames on your screen or speeding up your your your, your other screen because you, because you need to put everything in the same frequency because of the single uh, update queue so in mainline you need something that could have like many different update queue for different uh, different types of types of, of display and another thing is that AGF didn't have any uh, atomic operation for mode sets so Mode sets would be basically changing the screen resolution and the frame rate and the output routing. In Android, there was like there was no need to change output rate routing because there was only 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 one screen in your system. But in mainline, you you may you may change like how how your images uh, how your screen are set up. You can like mirror or you can like make a primary secondary. That's that's kind of that's that's changing the, the output routing. And there was no support to, to do this, those operations in atomic manner and update the, the planes on that screen at the same time. So that was something that was missing uh, on AGF. Moreover, the fact that AGF was built as a, as a mid layer made it like uh, quite inflexible for mainline. Uh, why in Android for most of the, most of most of the drivers and in, in, in user cases, uh, it was working 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 well. Um, that was mostly because of the driver-specific blobs in there, uh, and in ADF and Android, it was possible to have this layer on top of ADF and another layer uh, below, which, which would, be, would be the drivers that could create uh, and read those driver-specific blobs. In mainline, that's not possible, because we've been trying to make the KMS API as generic as possible on the display side. So you could have like a lot of generic compositors that just know how to talk the KMS uh, APIs and work on whatever whatever hardware. So that that's a, that was another problem, the the inflexible mid layer uh, with the driver specific blobs that 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 was creating that the proposal was to create a new and not generic user space API because of those things, uh, and that that would hurt. Um, the Linux desktop and uh, many other users that that, that would would be, have been using uh, KMS for a long time. So for for those reasons, maybe a couple more uh, AGF wasn't suitable for for upstream, and it ended up like rejected by by the community. But at the same time, there was there was already some discussion on getting some sort of atomic mode setting infrastructure on the mainline, on the mainline kernel. And a couple, I think a year and a half ago, we managed to, to finally integrate in, in the mainline kernel the DRM atomic infrastructure. And of course, the, the two main features of the atomic mode setting infrastructure is the atomic, atomic update of planes, uh, as AGF also had. But, we also, but, but in, in mainline, we, we have atomic operations for mode sets. And uh, that's also something that we really want to have uh, and ADF didn't provide. And that's achieved on mainline uh, in terms of user space API by a single IO control that we have in there, the DRM atomic IO control that uses the already in place uh, proper infrastructure. So when, when, when you want to, to send a new a new request to the kernel to update uh, your screens. You would build this request like with uh, which screen you want to use, with, with, which resolutions, frame rates, uh, the planes that are going to, to, to be used on those screens and the frame buffers, uh, the size of the, that buffers, all the configurations that, we, that you need to, that you need to set would be, would be added on, on this proper array that you, that you will create and then you send that to the kernel. Uh, in a single IO control in an atomic manner. And when that request gets to the kernel, there is a couple of phases that re the request ha has to go through. Uh, the two main ones is the check and the commit phases. The, those are the two most important operations uh, when we talk about atomic mode set in the kernel. Uh, the, fir the first one is the check. 
that's that's one of the most important part in there because as we talk about atomic mode settings uh, and plane updates, we want to make sure that the request we are going to, to send to that the request we want to put in the screen uh, it's, it's going to, to be on the screen because sometimes you, you you can configure something wrong or the hardware doesn't accept the configurations that you that you asked and your request would fail and you want to make sure that, that the request uh, either goes to the screen like every single bit of it the whole configuration that you asked, you, we put everything in the screen, or you don't put anything in the screen. So it's our and off approach. That's why I, that's one of the reasons we call this atomic. Uh, so we have the check phase to make sure that everything is going to succeed when we go and try for here for real to to program the hardware and update the screens. Uh, so the separation between check and commit phase is one of is one of the core features uh, of of the atomic mode setting. And that allow, allow us to, to have some interesting things like the test only flag, which, which allows uh, the user space or the compositor to, to send a request to the kernel that will execute only uh, the check phase. That's interesting to, to find the best, uh, best configuration options for, for your system. Uh, the compositor might try some, some, some few different uh, configurations before going to before going to for a real committing uh, in the hardware. So it, by doing that, sometimes you, you can you can hide from the user uh, some bad screen or some some configuration that doesn't work because you're, you're only testing that. You don't need to commit to the hardware. You can keep the user with some configuration that that works, and then in the background you just like keep testing different configurations. Um, and differently from from AGF. The mainline atomic mode setting, it's highly extensible to a very interesting set of helpers. So there is, and the helpers, like, they are very minimal for very single operations, like for update, update plane or to set a mode. There, there, is, there is very, uh, very a, lot, a lot of different helpers. Uh, and during, one nice thing, one nice thing of atomic mode setting is that during the, the, the during the time we were implementing it and, and porting new drivers for atomic mode setting, we managed to to drop a lot of code from from other drivers because atomic atom mode setting made made li drivers' lives like so easy that we that we we were able to to drop a lot a lot lots and lots of, lots of lines of code from from drivers because the the, the helpers are so smaller. Uh, these days, that you don't have like to, to do many different operations. The helpers are, are, are really small. Uh, so, so today, getting a new new drivers upstream that use it on mode settings is, is just a matter like of filling some helpers and all the basic support for uh, for that new new hardware, and you are mostly done. You don't need to write like lots of code anymore. And after we got a tom mode setting um, upstream, there was a few few other things that was still needed for for getting Android to to run on top of mainline kernel. Uh, and one of the main things was was getting the sync framework in the mainline kernel. By that time, the sync framework was already in the stage three because there was a lot of interesting on get on get get, get it upstream. Uh, but it, it stayed there like for two or three years with no one touching it, uh, and to the point that we decided we, we would work on it and try to get uh, this working upstream with the, with the GRM, GRM atom mode setting uh, interfaces. And by the time we, we decided to, to do that, the, most of the features that the, the sync framework uh, added to, to, to the Android kernel, some of them weren't needed anymore, because we, during, in, the, in the past few years, we added the, the fence uh, synchronization mechanisms to the kernel. Uh, that's, that's a way to synchronize our buffers between drivers inside the kernel. And that fence, that, that, that fence mechanism, it, it replaced what we were doing uh, with sync timeline and sync point in Android, so we decided to just remove it. Uh, and in the end, we, were, we realized that 
the sync framework was needed only for, for passing the file descriptors around between the kernel user space. So we tried to keep it mi really minimal uh, and remove all the rest that wasn't related to uh, related to passing file descriptor around. So we removed the sync timeline, we removed the sync points, uh, and the sync fence that were the part related to pass, passing uh, file descriptor around, we, we reworked this part uh, quite a bit to fit the, 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 the upstream needs. So the first thing we did there uh, was to rename it because the name, beca the name beca became uh, somewhat confusing. We, we already had the, the the fences uh, infrastructure inside the kernel, and then we, we were trying to add something that was called sync fence. We just decided to call it sync file because it was a file. We had to break the API in the process, but the only user at the moment was, uh, was Android. There was no upstream user for this infrastructure, so we broke the API to make it more future-proof. Uh, and we also provide some paths for, for the Android open source project for to, to, to work around this, this API difference. So this, the, the paths are already upstream on the Android project. We move a lot of, a lot of API, leaving only the file descriptor specific um, functions in there, only, only the infrastructure necessary to, to communicate and to create sync files uh, and communicate those sync files with the space. So there is basically like two functions exported in there. When, 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 when you, you want to create a new, a new sync file, uh, you have like a fence in the kernel that you previously create for, for that, that's associated some buffer. You get that, you get that fence from, uh, from the driver, you create a sync file, and later you can create a new, uh, you can ask for a new file descriptor, you associate that file descriptor with your sync file, and you can pass that file descriptor to your user space. Uh, and then the other way around, when, when you receive a file descriptor from, from the user space that's a sync file file descriptor, you, you can extract the fence that are inside that sync file. So that's basically uh, that, that, that whole uh, framework that, that, that exists in Android before is now those, those two functions that are exported um, on, on the mainline kernel. And then after we, we had the sync framework uh, out of the stage three. The next step was to actually use it because we, we now had the, the, the needed interfaces to add support for explicit synchronization um, on KMS. So we started working to, to get the atomic mode set interfaces um, working on, under uh, the explicit synchronization uh, fashion. And the way we did it uh, was basically trying to extend the germ properties that, there, that were already there, that we, we were already using for, uh, for a talk mode setting. Uh, and we managed to do the explicit synchronization work entirely in germ core. So all, every single driver in, in KMS, they already support um, explicit synchronization by default. You, you don't need to do anything else on the driver. You, by just adding your new driver to, to, the, to the KMS uh, infrastructure, you have uh, out-of-the-box support for explicit synchronization. And there is, there is two type of fences. Uh, there is the fences that, we, as I, I showed on the diagram before, there are the fences that we, we are sending to the kernel for the kernel to, to wait on that. So we have the fences that are fences we are sending for, we are sending to KMS, um, we, may, we may be getting those fans from, from the GPU driver because the GPU driver may be using that buffer for some hindering job. Uh, and we were waiting for, for that fence to signal before proceeding uh, with any scan out of that buffer on the screen. On the other side, we have the out fences uh, that are the fences that, that are created by, uh, by KMS and signal by, by KMS. Uh, and this work, have, is present on the 410, 410 kernel that was just released last Sunday, I think it's last Sunday. A bit more of detail on the two type of fences we have in KMS. Uh, as I said, the in fences, 
they are defenses that uh, we have to wait on before putting the, the, the contents of the buffer on the screen because the buffer is still being used by someone else. Uh, and that's done by, you send that fence to the kernel by using the infense file descriptor property uh, on every single germ plane that's on, that's on your, your, your screen, your interfa interface. Uh, and then the germ core code is responsible to, to get that file descriptor, uh, figure out what fences are in there, and call one of the helpers from, from the atomic helper infrastructure to, to wait that those fences to signal before proceeding with any scan out. On the other side, we create fences uh, we create the out fences on KMS and sign on them. Uh, and to communicate with the space, we created a new property. That's the out fence pointer property. Uh, and user space would pass a pointer that the, that the kernel will fill with the file descriptor number. Uh, and for out fences, we are doing uh, one, one fancy per, per start C. Start C is, is, is basically a description of the, your offer pipeline, like, um, which, which planes are connected to, to which screens, and you, you represent that connection with a CRTC. So we have one fence per CRTC because we, 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 we thought it, we, it wasn't um, a good idea to have like a, a single fence per plane because they, they would always uh, signal at the same time because they see, we decide to signal the fences uh, at the moment, the buffers go to the screen, and for every start to see, those buffers will go to the screen at the same time. Um, this, the way you signal fences in, in, in KMS is a bit different from what Android was doing, because here we are signaling fences when, when, we, when we put the burn, buffer on the screen, and on Android, we are signaling those fences when the, when the buffer was out of the screen, so just, just a bit of, uh, just, just a little bit of difference, but uh, um, we, I'll talk later on, so, uh, on how we, we, can, we can work around this, that on Android. And the next piece we, need to, we needed to solve uh, was the handler, the handler side. Uh, the idea is the same. It's quite similar to KMS, but because of the way we, we decided to, 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 to make uh, uh, GPU drivers, we, had, we, we have to go and extend every single driver's interfaces, uh, the exact buffer or control, and then add support for sync files and, and fence inside that driver. Uh, that's something that's, that's already done. Uh, on the free Drino driver, and we've been working on i915, Virgil, and, uh, and some other drivers. There, is, there are pets, uh, you can find pets on the main list, but we, we, we didn't push anything upstream yet for, for those drivers. Yep, that's, that's what, uh, what we did on, on the kernel side for, for upstream. Uh, now I'm going to, to discuss a little bit what happened on, on the user space side to, to get uh, Android to, to, to work with, with those interfaces, uh, with, the explicit, with GRM, GRM atomic mode setting and explicit, explicit fencing. Uh, the first thing uh, I'm going to talk is the hardware composer. The hardware composer is actually only an API specification. It, it sits on the abstraction layer on Android, but it's basically uh, specifying the APIs that the Android uh, composer surface Pling needs to use uh, to, to put things on the screen. And as I said, the, the way we signal the out fences, they are different uh, on mainline and what they, they were, and, and the way they were, they were done uh, on AGF. So on Hydro Composer 1, which was, which was the one that was working with AGF, we had what, was, what Google was calling uh, speculative fences. Uh, in this case, the fence they signal when the buffer is out of the screen, so we scan out something on the screen, and then the next buffer came, the next buffer arrives, you, you remove uh, the buffer that's on the screen, and that moment that buffer is out of the screen, the buffer is free to be reused, you signal that fence. Uh, but then what we did in mainline uh, was the opposite of that. At the moment the buffers go to the screen, we signal it, and then 
Google had to change the way they signal fences because of this change on, on the mainline kernel. So on Hydro Composer 2, they're trying to go for non-speculative fence. That means they, they, they signal the fence like right after it goes to the screen. It doesn't wait like for the next request to arrive and, and, and then signal the fence later because we are signal fences uh, when they, they are on the screen. That means they are, the, the previous buffer is free and you can reuse the previous buffer. But that's, that's only the, the API specification. That doesn't solve any, any problem yet. We, we will still need to implement a hardware composer that actually can, can talk with, to, to the GRM hardware composer, uh, can talk to the GRM hardware composer APIs. Uh, and that's the job of the GRM hardware, GRM hardware composer. Uh, that's a project that's part of the Android open source project already. It already supports uh, atomic mode setting uh, and I think Google used the GRM hardware composer on the Pixel C device. Uh, and we've been, we've been trying to get support for explicit fences in there. Uh, we, it's, it's still a work in progress. It's, it's mostly working, but we've been hitting some issues with, I think, with GL and threading. That's something that Hubber Foss uh, is, is work at the moment, the Collabora. Uh, Google is quite interested in having this, this work upstream, the Android, Android, Android open source project. We, we probably will be solving the issues in the next month or so uh, and get everything upstream. And one final piece of this work uh, is the two MESA extensions that Android created to, to, to have uh, support on the, on the GPU side. So there is, there is just these two extensions, one to, to, to get an outfence from, from the GPU driver, another one to make your GPU driver to wait uh, on, on a fence to signal before proceeding with any job on, on, on that rendering request. Those two extensions are already upstream on Meza. We, we managed to, to add support uh, for them. Uh, I think there is upstream support on the Meza driver for Fuidrino. And i915 and VirGL is a work in progress. So there are paths out there. I did the, the VirGL part, um, but we didn't, we didn't manage to, to get that upstream yet. But we, we have the paths for, for, for it. Yeah, that's that's all I, I want to talk about. Uh, that's definitely a good start. I think there is still some other things we need we need to 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 work on on, on the graphic side. Uh, one of those things we uh, is, is is happening kind of happening at the moment. There is a lot of discussion going on about the the common locator, um, but at least we we already have. Um, a way to get Android to use the KMS, um, the KMS interfaces uh, to run Android. So hopefully we will start seeing devices uh, going to the stores that are using KMS interfaces anytime soon because the, the whole infrastructure is there already. Um, and I, I hope we will start seeing those devices in there. Uh, and in terms of support for the Linux, top, Linux desktop, we've been working on, on getting support for, for Wayland uh, on explicit synchronization. Maybe we'll get any support for, for X11 as well. Um, we've been discussing those features, but we, we, we don't have any, anything, anything done on that yet. It's, it's still on, on our to-do list. And I would like to thank you, uh, everyone that was involved in this job, all those people and maybe more. Um, reviewing, reviewing code, uh, proposing ideas, and all sort of things. Uh, yep. Yeah. So that's it I had for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for listening. Uh, questions? Sorry, could you? Like, 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 yeah, the, the, the sync timeline is kind of independent uh, of view blanks. It's just a way to, to keep the order be be between the fences that we create in there. Uh, but the way we signal the fences is, 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 is tied to, to the view blank synchronization signal. Okay. Uh, Arc C++.
from Chrome OS. It would be just that Wi-Fi supports Sorry? On Android, yeah, um, yeah the, the changes we made on on the Sync framework was basically like some some APIs, and that's upstream on on the Android open source project. They have the libsync uh, with abstraction between inside Android, so you just use the libsync. You, you you don't need to know which which kernel you're using if if the Sync framework com, comes from mainline or if it comes from from Android. Uh, Sorry. It's backward compatible, yeah. We did, the, we did the change in a way, it doesn't matter which kernel, which interface you're using, it, it's gonna work, yeah. Have you had any interest on the uh, Coso UV version of Light Navigation or on the Mali? No, I haven't heard. Any other question? Okay, thank you everyone.